Hey everybody! I hope y'all are having a great day and are excited to make some art. Y'all turned in some fantastic self-portraits last week and I really got to know some of y'all through y'all's beautiful portraits. This week we have an exciting lesson planned. Today we are going to be making Bende.Heroes based off of the book y'all read in the library, The Dot, and based off of what we will be learning about today, Bende Dots. Before we start the lesson, we're going to go through a quick history of what Bende Dots are. So, Bende Dots are dots that were invented by Benjamin Henry Day Jr. a way long time ago, around the 1800s. He was a printmaker and illustrator and was trying to figure out a way to make color printing easier for people with newspapers. So what Bende dots are, are they are basically these pieces of paper that have dots of ink printed onto them already. And what they would do is they would have their image that they would like to color in. I have this example, kind of Roy Lichtenstein inspired. But anyway, they would take these colorful sheets of colored dots and overlay them over their images in all different layers and mixtures of colors to create a colorful print. Now you can see if you have at home a newspaper, if you look up really, really, really closely, you can actually still see these Bende dots and they are used still today. Now, if you are at home and you want to try creating your own Bende dot paper sheets, kind of like these, you can take some napkins, some really thin napkins and unfold them, and you can color in the dots and you can experiment with layering the different colors over each other. Now, if they're a little hard to see, you can hold them up to a light in your room or you can hold them up to a window and you can play around with combining different colors. It really is a lot of fun, so I encourage y'all to try this if y'all can. But moving ahead, we're gonna go ahead and start creating our Dot Day Heroes. Now go ahead and get a blank piece of paper. You can use markers, pencils, pens, anything that you have on hand to start creating your hero. And there's going to be a YouTube video below on how to create characters if you would like to look at that. But I think I'm going to try and freehand something real quick. I think I'm going to make a dot day dot dude. So I think I'm going to, since he's a dot hero, I'm going to start out making a big old dot for his head. I'm gonna kind of give him a cheek. We'll start from there. I'm gonna give him a big old smile. I like to see my superheroes with a big old smile. Some big old eyes. I think I'm going to give him a mask. Now you may notice that making your dot day hero is very similar to the self portraits that you made last week. Similarly, you will also in your dot day heroes be using the element of line but this week you will also be using the element of color and the principal pattern the combination of these three elements and principles together are going to help you to create very dynamic and exciting superheroes for dot day
Okay, now that I've finished out my Dot Dude superhero, I am going to start coloring him in with Ben Day Dots. Now there is a couple of different ways that you can do this. One way is that you can go ahead and color him in. He or she, whoever your superhero you want to make, color them in solid first, like that, and then you can go over with a darker color and start filling in bandet dots, which kind of go in a pattern like this. You kind of start out making a row, and then you kind of once you've made a row, you go up and in between a pair of dots, you make the next row and you fill in from there and try and fill in all the way to the edges. Now, if you're doing this with marker, you just have to remember that in order for the Benday dots to show up, the color underneath your dots needs to be lighter than the dot you put over. Say for instance you want to color in a purple first and put yellow dots, well that won't really work, the yellow won't show up. So, But you can most definitely fill in yellow and put purple dots over that. That would work great. But anyway, I'm gonna keep on filling in my dot dude and then we'll be back here in a minute with finished dot dude. Now if you want to, you can make dots by making circles first, kind of like this, and going in a row, and then coloring in the area around the dots. And then you can color in the dots with any colors you want. And with that, we have our finished Dot Day Superhero. I really look forward to seeing all of y'all's superheroes, and if y'all want to have an extra activity, y'all can try and put y'all's superheroes into a comic, which I will show y'all how to make here in a moment. 
For those of you who are wanting to make a comic book with your Dot Day heroes in them, this is a really easy way how to make a four panel comic page. So if y'all have a blank piece of paper, what y'all are wanting to do is go ahead and fold the paper in half. I'm gonna start off hamburger fold and then we can unfold this and then we will fold it long ways like a hot dog making sure to meet up the corners nicely and getting a nice crisp fold once we have folded it twice we can open it up and you'll see two invisible lines going up and down the paper. Now with these lines as our guide, we're going to go into each of these invisible boxes and make a square or a rectangle depending on the size of your paper. Now these don't have to be rectangles. If you have say a cup or something at home, you can even make a circular one or maybe an oval or maybe even a triangle. The options are endless. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and just make four rectangles. Now these rectangles, if you noticed a word earlier that you hadn't heard before, are called panels. And the places in between the panels are in comic book terms called gutters. Now that's kind of funny, isn't it? Why would you call them gutters? I'm not really sure on that one, but that's what they're called. Now we're just going to finish up these rectangles here. And these don't have to be perfectly straight rectangles, but if you want them to, you can find a ruler or even the edge of a tissue box to make the corners and lines all nice and crisp. But I kind of like these slightly wavy lines. They give it some personality. Now just a brief overview of what you can put into your comic. You can, the options are endless. You can make whatever story you want. But as a guide for those who don't really know how to start, in the first page, you're going to want to establish your scene. Say for instance, I want this to start out on a hilly landscape with the sun in the sky. I'm going to make it a smiley sun. Put a tree back here maybe. Hmm, maybe a windy road. Maybe this will be a sidewalk. I think this will be a sidewalk. This will be the first panel. And then usually after the first panel, something happens. Hmm, say for instance, a storm cloud moves in for this example. You're going to want to try to your best to your ability to kind of copy what you did in the previous panel. Now it doesn't have to be exact because that's the beauty of art is that nothing has to be exact. That's where expression comes in. Now we're going to get our tree back into frame here and we're going to draw our sun and since for this example I'm going to put some storm coming in I'm going to put our sun with a little little frowny face because Mr. Storm Cloud decided to come in and block his rays which isn't very nice but 
So we'll give this storm cloud some little angry eyebrows. And then after this, you'll want kind of a reaction to what's happening usually in the second panel. So we'll be like, Mr. Sun probably wants to say something about this because he's not very happy with Mr. Stormcloud. So we'll go ahead and put all of our other things back in once again. Now we're going to include something called a speech bubble, which are used in comics to show that the characters are talking or thinking. Now this will be a pretty simple speech bubble. We'll kind of start with a V and then make a big old oval or circle. I think I'll put Mr. Sun saying, Hey, that's not nice. And then we'll put Mr. Stormcloud in here. We'll make him a little, a little sad. He was like, uh-oh, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Finish the sun's rays here. And then we'll make our end panel here. Put Mr. Tree back in. And since Mr. Stormcloud was so sorry that he blocked Mr. Sun's rays, we're just going to put some action lines in here. Action lines are kind of used in comics to show characters' movement, since from panel to panel, all these pictures are still not moving. But with action lines, you can give the illusion of movement. So put Mr. Sun back in. He's happy because he has his space back. But then Mr. Stormcloud is, you know, leaving the area, so we'll put his little storm tail here and then some swirly action lines showing that he's leaving. And then we'll put Mr. Sun saying thank you because, you know, the storm cloud was nice enough to give him back his space. And with that, that's how you make a simple four panel comic page. Now I look forward to seeing y'all's comic pages with y'all's heroes in them if y'all choose to make them. And I will be seeing y'all in the next video. Bye guys. Have fun.